Hello. I am starting a live now for Waiting for Karen Parrot of um, Surgeon Sorceress. And she is actually going to be interviewing me. So that is kind of exciting. But, oh, I see her. Let me get her on. Hi there, how are you? I am actually, I like that filter that you found. Should I get one too? How do I do that? I haven't actually got a filter. I've got a light, one of those ring lights. Oh, the light. Is. Yeah, okay. so it's quite late here, so I just thought well, I'd better get some lighting going on because I'm tired, so yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you're looking fabulous, um, going... Thank you. I am going to shut off the comments and the request for live. Okay. Um, and I know that you already have some questions, so we will okay. go with those. Good. I feel like I should shut the light in here, too, so we don't have so much light. I feel like no, we should have a new... My light's yeah. actually quite a soft light. It's quite a soft light. I know. That's what I'm lighting. thinking. I'm thinking I should I should change the lighting and make it, you know, similar. Okay. But Intimate. That'll be, that'll be, <laughs> that'll be, I know. I, I was like, well, I should create the nighttime vibe too. But I'll just sit back like this and then we'll, you know. So how's, well, well, the, how's the weather there uh, over across the pond today? It's been a scorcher here today. Uh, it's nice today. I'm not sure how, it, it's not too hot. Maybe it's like 75 degrees today, Okay, I guess. Yeah, yeah perhaps. perhaps. But I guess you guys are in the 80s today, huh? Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, it's very hot, very hot. So yeah, but we love it. We love the sunshine when we get it because it doesn't happen often enough, so yeah good, yeah good. so i've been enjoying was... your workout videos beth they've been amazing well, yeah. today was particularly good i thought oh, I yeah get this. today was particularly fun um yeah good and uh, karen and i are actually the other karen karen windsor yeah and i are actually going to be um doing monday wednesday and friday next month wow so that is going to be awesome yeah, you know, we, we um, are both lipedema women, and Karen has um, does um, she does therapies for the body for treatment uh, for the lymphatics, and has had phenomenal success for her parent her patients as well as herself. And so, um, with getting word that uh, her therapies are not going back to work next week, like they had thought. We okay. said, you know what, let's just take July and we'll do another. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're going to we're gonna do what we can. Good. Um, at, at the end of the day, even though Lip Lipedema Awareness Month is being recognized this month, it doesn't stop for you guys. It's, it's always going on, isn't it? So um, it's great what you've done this month, but it should be recognized continually, really, shouldn't it? Right. And, yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, we have to we have to self care and attend to our bodies anyway. So yeah. why not, you know, why not if we just, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, go along with others? I think that today kind of it it um, it made me think about the fact that you know it kind of is really helpful to work with somebody who actually not only has done the done the work themselves but you know who is who is part of the community because you get a different perspective and you really learn like Karen was talking today about how it was important to do slow movements to actually um, get to activate all the muscles that are under the lipedema and um, you know that's not necessarily how you would do it with a regular body you know and so I thought you know that perspective really just those little tidbits that people here I think can really be helpful yeah. um so so hopefully you know we're making a difference and that's what that's that's both of our goals you know we both feel very purpose driven to really do what we can and to be as um 
kind of experimental, you know, as possible, you know, um, try new things and, and uh, glean from what um, research has been presented, you know, how we could um, try and work with those things. So, yeah, so hopefully um, there should be, you know, like you said, like continuing, we'll, we'll be continuing. Okay, so thank you very much for joining me um, this evening. It's kind of like I'm on the bottom and, you know, I'm not used to that, but it's all good. It's all good. Um, the purpose of this exercise for me is I run a number of surgery groups through Facebook and um, there are a growing population of lipedema or lippy sisters who um, are connecting in those groups and um, have actually asked me to do a session, obviously because of it being lipedema Awareness Month. Um, and to actually recognize their particular uh, plight as opposed to the usual tummy tucks, facelifts, uh, like right. the second for, for cosmetic reasons, so on, so on. So it's, it's, it, tonight is dedicated for them. And the reason for getting you on is because you, of course, have been living with this um, for the whole of your life from the, the chat that we had the other day. Um, mm -hmm. So unusual in the fact that you didn't have the onset of lipedema in puberty or in pregnancy or in menopause you actually have lived with this for your entire existence right exactly um, yes do you think that's helped you because you've all you know you've not known anything different when you compare yourself to other lippy sisters yes i think you know i actually this is my own personal belief and i am not a medical professional by any stretch of the imagination um, I, I, I've had lots of doctors and nurses in my world, so it, it's something that's not foreign to me, but I am not, I am not a qualified medical professional in any way, but, yeah. um, I, I personally think that it is, um, it has a genetic component yeah. and it, in my opinion, is likely something that just manifests at different times when it gets triggered for different women. Mm. So like for me, if you see like a picture of me, like when I was four and then a picture of me when I was six, I'm like a little chubbier when I'm six, mm. you know, then a little chubbier at eight. Then by the time pu puberty came around, yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, the, the thighs were filling in further you know, the, the hips and the butts were starting to come in. I had to go to my first diet, you know, I had to go to Weight Watchers because my cousin told me that, you know, I wouldn't, you know, by the time high school ran around, I would want to um, be slimmer because the boys weren't going to like thick thighs. And so I should lose weight. And so that was my first official, you know, trip to the diet plan. I think in the fourth grade, my mother had me on a, um, you know, what was, what was then a low carb diet? Um, she had my, so my mother, uh, had the same exact shape and, um, you know, I always thought, I never thought there was something wrong with me. Yeah. I never thought that my legs were odd. I never thought they were different, um, because my mother had the same shape and I thought, oh, this is just our Italian this is our Italian, you know, heritage. heritage. This is how it works. Yeah. Um, and so it was not, a, a, I don't, I have never experienced that piece. Um, and so, you know, in, in retrospect, you know, there's so many, and I was diagnosed in October of 2017. So yeah. I have lived the majority of my life with, you know, just always thinking there's something, you know, I'm doing something wrong. I'm not eating the right thing. I'm not exercising enough. I'm not, you know, whatever. And so, it was always about me being the cause and effect of. Is mom you know, still with us? Is mom still with you? No, she is not. Okay. No, she, so did she, she ever um, live for you to, to to know to be able to tell her that this actually was something that was. Um, no, uh, no, she didn't know. So no, she went through the entire no. of her life without knowing yeah. that her shape yeah. was attributable to lipedema. Yeah. Uh, in, in the last two years of life. She uh, went on a, a diet plan again, of course, mm -hmm. um, that was um, called Jenny Craig. I don't know if you have that there. It's like yeah. prepared. Yeah. Meal. Okay. So yeah. she went on Jenny Craig. She lost a hundred pounds during that, that uh, took her about a year. 
She lost 100 pounds. She was absolute perfection, you know, followed everything to the T. And she walked about three to four miles a day up hills and that kind of thing for the first time in her life. And she was 70 at the time. Wow. And um, she, you know, even in the very end, she, I think, I think on her death certificate, it said she weighed 118 pounds. I'm sorry. I don't know what that transfers into in, in, you know, non pounds, but, um, but the only thing that was left on her was her sagging arms yeah. and her that were deflated. Um, she didn't have it. I have muscles because I've always worked out, but she did not have that. Um, and then her legs, she had the butt shelf and the, the saddlebag hips that, you know, like mine are more, you know, mine is more like this. She was more like that and, and straight kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And she used to say she would, she wished she could have them cut off. Oh. And, you know, I just always used to think that was like, you know, extreme and crazy and like, you know. But it was always difficult to find something to wear or, you know, um, and so she, you know, but man, when I think about how, you know, how things would have been different had she known. Yeah. Um, how, how did things change for you once you realized that actually this wasn't just this whole sort of having to diet, having to wash your weight. It was something that was um, actually genetically within your body makeup. How did that change for you? So for me, um, I believe <laughs> that that aspect of always having to diet and always having to exercise does not change. And really, your game really should be upped, right? Mm. Uh, because you have to really, in my experience, you have to be fanatical about what you eat or don't eat. And you have to be exceptionally disciplined in both your eating style and your exercise. And you have to eat for whatever causes you the least amount of inflammation. So like in my personal story, I had just right before I was diagnosed, I had just undergone about a six month process where I lost weight. I worked out with a trainer. I was like in the gym every morning at 5 a.m., and I lost about 30 pounds at that time. And I was like in fighting shape when I went into the doctor mm -hmm. and she was like, you, 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 there's no fat on your body other than your lipedema fat. So I, I mean, I don't know, you know, and then, um, I, she said, you know, like, cause I wanted to start a different and another diet. And she's like, what are you going to die for? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Like live your life and don't go overboard you know, follow, you know, what you know works for the least amount of inflammation 80% of the time, but like you have to live. So, mm -hmm. you know, what are you going to do? So in that, so I had been about seven years prior to that, I had been gluten-free yep. and about a week before I was diagnosed, I got off of the gluten-free train <laughs> and that just doesn't work for my body. So I have um, gained about 25 pounds since my initial diagnosis, uh, wow. depending on the day, 20 to 25 pounds. And it doesn't come off easy. Um, yeah. It's, uh, you know, is it because there's so much more diseased fat, you know, the, the fat, so lipedema is a diseased fat, although this week we learned it's a connective tissue disorder. And we also learned that there's biomarkers now indicated. So we've got a lot of research, but in, in a layman's terms, at least let's forget why is it there, how did it get there or whatever. But the, the fat molecule that is actually lipedema, because it is a different type, it, uh, it is filled with fluid, so it's heavy. It's dense. And mm. it, is, it is diseased. It is a sick fat cell in your body. It's different yeah. than the other fat cells in your body. And so you know, is it more resistance because now, you know, it's three years older, you know, like, I mean, I, I don't know. So it's, it's a fascinating thing. And every day is an aha moment since, um, you know, there's a, I, I recanted this story the other day 
um, that when I was in the Girl Scouts and like I was eight years old and I had, they were going to go in a canoe in camp. Yeah. And I was like, hell no, I'm not going in that canoe because I thought I would sink the boat. Sink. The second yeah. that I put my leg in, the boat would sink. And so I realized now, because I, I vividly remember that thinking, like I remember envisioning my leg going in that boat. And yeah. I remember thinking, no. And it's because I knew that the, the, my leg was heavy. You know, right. it feels like a cement column to lift. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing about you said, you know, having it congenitally, um, the other day I was having this discussion as well with, um, you and she was, she also has had it from the beginning yes. and yeah. we both are in very big agreement that like, we don't know the pain that we're in because we don't know any different. So yeah. we just plug along, plug along, plug along. And neither of us like sit. And I used to be about a hundred right now today, about 160 pounds more than I am now. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I have been about, I don't know, 60 pounds smaller than I am now. And, mm -hmm. um, and it ne in, in all of those ranges, like I never stopped, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe there was a time where I didn't go to the opera because I wasn't going to fit in the seat or I didn't go to a baseball game because I wasn't going to fit in the seat, but it wasn't because I was, um, you know, housebound or I couldn't do anything or I, o I've always gone, gone, gone. Um, you, have, and... you have, you have though, which is different to some of the Lippy sisters that I've come across. You have a very, very positive outlook on life. Um, well, there, you do. It shines through you. It shines through every pore. So, and that isn't that isn't common with uh, people that have this condition. Um, in fact, particularly those that uh, you know they they haven't been diagnosed and they don't understand why. And they just think, you know, it, it's me. It's something that I'm doing wrong. You know, I can't seem to shift this weight. Why is it the way that it is? Um, they, it, it leads to all kinds of eating disorders and depression and, um, you know, those kinds of things. And you're bound to have come across those things in your community as well. So I just wanted people to watching to know that although your, your story is very um, encouraging and very inspiring and hence your following, I would imagine, it isn't common that somebody can have such a great go to go get go get it you know because you've exercised yeah. all of your life right yeah from i mean at least 75 percent of my life you know yeah. i you know at least 75 percent of my life i have done the right thing and exercised yeah. and eaten correctly and there was that 25 percent that was not not so good you know um, and, uh, you know, I mean, I've been in situations, you know, I was, uh, when I was at my biggest, I was in my job, I was in human resources and I went to rush into my office to go take a call. And I went to jump into my chair and I crashed the chair, the chair broke in the middle of the office and, you know, the people had to come and see what was it. And, you know, I had to have them order me a special, you know, big size chair and, um, you know, talk about embarrassing moments. And, you I know, uh, I mean, I, at that time I had a boss who was um, maybe a size zero, a little oh tiny God. bit of a thing. And she was, she was someone who had no tolerance for fat people at all. I mean, the, the, you know, the backhanded um, uh, way that she interacted with me was fascinating, absolutely fascinating, because she would so try so hard to be nice and pleasant to my face but it absolutely killed her and came through every single time. Wow. So, you know, I have been in that world. And for me, about four years ago in 2016, in February of 2016, I decided that my son, because I my son just turned 13, and I decided that, you know, he was getting bigger, he was getting older, he could stand a little of his own devices, and I didn't have to be on top of him every minute. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, wait a minute, like, what is my life? What, you know, I met, I met somebody 
uh, I had met a dad at school, you know, who he never met before. And he said, Oh, what do you do? And I was like, what do I do? Like, this is what I do. I wait for my kid. I sit here for my kid. I, you know, I food shop. I go to, because I was a stay at home mom at the time. Um, I, you know, I shop, I, you know, go to the dry cleaner. I mean, what do you mean? What do I do? And he was like, no, like, like, what do you do? Like, what do you like to do in life? And I was like, what does that mean? You know, <laughs> so, so he proceeded to tell me all of his hobbies. And I was yeah. like, hobbies? Like, who has a hobby? I'm a mom. Since when did a mom get a hobby? And I've had this, like, I haven't said this in a long time. I've had this thing, especially that time I was on a, I was on a roll that I'm coming back as a man. You know, like in my new life, I'm coming back as a man. So I can do whatever I want to do. You know, I can I can have a hobby. I can do whatever I think I should do that day, you know. Um, because I somehow had the feeling that men are much better suited to to do the things that they want to do and the things that they love, it, irregardless of their uh professional responsibilities they figure out a way to fit it in whereas we're always like oh I don't know you know and we let it slide yeah so I decided I'm not letting my life slide anymore so I had remembered oh I used to love to go to the beach I used to love to go for long walks oh I used to love to go dancing oh I used to bowl occasionally oh I you know used to love to whatever the you know And from that point forward, I said, okay, I'm going to start doing things. And I was like, you know, I I can do them on my own. I can do them with friends. I can do them, you know, whatever it takes, but I am going to get back into that. And part of that was actually coming to understand my body because I didn't understand it. I didn't, you know, I was that person that took a picture. People find this funny, I guess. I was the person who, you know, if you took a group photo, I was the person in the back. So you couldn't see my hips or my legs. Um, I was that person. I was the person who um, I did not have a connection to what did my body really look like to others but more importantly, like, what did it look like to me? Yeah. And I thought for sure there was nobody else who looked like me, not one person. Like, I was the only person who looked like this. And then as I, so I actually got on social media only in June of 2016. Um, and I started to see, oh, my gosh, there are people that look like me. And then it's been about two years that I've been on Instagram. And then when I got to Instagram and I really saw women who looked like me, I was like, what? Who knew this existed? And also after my diagnosis, I went to the Fat Disorders Research Society convention we had here and I modeled and I was in, you know, like in a room with like three, 400 women who they all like had some kind of relational shape to mine. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. Who knew? Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think, you know, it has been for me. uh, Yes. I probably have always had um, a good outlook and, and confidence in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, But I, you know, there was being, being able to embrace it and to be modeling now hence the reason being able to embrace and to celebrate your hips now and to model and do the things that you do right correct yes so it was it's become even more important now you know back in the day I used to do like little bit of modeling and um so it wasn't a new thing for me to pick that up again because I think the first modeling shoot I did again was in that summer of 2016 I think and then um And then uh, still it was like, now I feel absolutely 100% purpose driven that like people need to see these kind of bodies and people, you know, and women, Mm -hmm. you know, of all ages need to know and of all sizes and lipedema or not Mm -hmm. uh, need to know that, you know, it's, I think last week I was like, it's okay to be sexy. You know, it really is. It's not a shame. It's not a crime. It's that nobody's gonna, you know, the, the, you know, 
lightning's not going to strike. It's really okay. <laughs> you know, it's okay. Um, it's not just Victoria's Secret models that are sexy. And I think us women, we place so much pressure on ourselves from the external forces and the media and all of that, that we, we don't realize what men, you know, let, let's just, let's just go with a flat, you know, men are interested in women. Let's just go, you know, I know that we have a million renditions, but let's just go with that flat assumption, right? We're, we're never taught that a man likes anything other than what perhaps a Victoria's Secret model looks like. We're not. Right. And so the thought is, is just astounding, really. It, it's mind blowing. Um, I, I, keep forgetting to research this again, but it's either in 2017 or 2018. The number one Google search by men was plus size women. Now, wow. do you do you think that any plus size woman would actually ever believe that? I don't know. No, I mean, I don't, I, I don't believe, it. I don't think they would, you know? Um, and, you know, even, um, yeah, I, you know, and, and so I think we have to start shifting our mind or even like, like for me, when I, when I put up a post on my Instagram now, I can put up the junkiest outfit, no makeup, hair, like I'm like horrible, you know, I think it's just dumb to even put up mm -hmm. and I can get the best, the most responses with the nicest messages. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? Like, why? how could, why would you like that picture? Like that was just me having to do something. That's like, not like, it's not a model picture. It's not a, but it just goes to prove that like in, in particular men, because in my world, I get more response from men than anything else. Uh, um, they actually like some, a, a real body, a real person, a real yeah. look. You know, like they're like, you know, hey, the, you know, look at the girl walking down the street who just rolled out of bed to go get her coffee as the, as opposed to the one who just walked out of the Gucci store with her bags. I mean, it, it is astounding. And I think it's encouraging, I think, it's encouraging for other people that have the living with yeah. it to know that, yeah. um, you know, you can embrace it and you, you have to, don't you? You've got no choice because you're, it's with you, whether well, you like it or not. Yes. So that that's my that's my big platform this year is and it, I believe that this is far reaching is that I think that if we had and is totally um like even goes to everything going on in the world I think that if we all could embrace ourselves mm -hmm. right whatever our situation it doesn't even have to be our physical situation it could be our living situation it could be the car that we have the dog that we have the school that somebody go whatever it is if mm. we could embrace it yeah and be like okay this is how it is right now yeah then we could say okay let me let me deal with that right now let me just accept the fact that that's how it is yeah. now it doesn't mean that you have to be thrilled with it mm. it doesn't mean that you you know it's your end game it doesn't mm. mean and then celebrate the fact that that situation is unique to you. Yeah, sure. We, we would all be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. We would be amazing. If people could embrace their uniqueness instead of everybody trying to Conform get to... to ideal. Yeah, like something they're not, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know? Mm. Let's um, try and take some of these yeah. questions, if we may, Beth, because yeah. otherwise we're going to, I'm conscious we're going to be running out of time, okay? So um, yeah. talk to us about the stages of lipedema. Now, obviously, you've lived with it for all of your life, okay? Have you noticed a marked difference, a progression through the stages from one to, uh, you know, from when it becomes, you know, sort of slight and then it progresses to even lip, uh, lipo lipedema or however, whatever the pronunciation is over there? Um, right. Lymphedema as well. Do you have evidence of that? Because you did mention some fibrotic um, tissue going on there. So I think that the fibrosis is uh, just dependent on each person and their tissues. I think you can have fibrosis at any stage. Okay. And currently, because like, I think the stages are currently under review right now. So yes. I'm hesitant to, to um, really talk they're about that. They're different in the States and they're different in the States to what they are over here yeah. as well. <laughs> exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, here in the States, we are just, um, I believe it was last week, if not the week before, there was um, a, a council th that was developing um, uh, the standards of care for lipedema because we don't even have, lipedema is not even a, uh, a di it doesn't even have a diagnosis code yet here in the United States. Um, and that is, that is, that is already been established. It just hasn't made it into the directory yet. Wow. Um, and then now they have submitted the standards of care. So, you know, I think things will start changing as well. Um, but um, so for me, I have stage two, three between stage two and stage three. Um, I believe that that, I believe the stages are very weight related. Um, and whether you have any kind of obesity with it or not, when I was initially diagnosed, I was stage two. So we know that, you know, I've gone up. Um, and then, um, I, uh, there are types and I don't even fit into a type because I have it from about my mid calf to my waist and then in my upper arm is where you see it. Now, mm -hmm. do I really have it to my ankle and it just doesn't show for me? Maybe. I do mm -hmm. definitely have the tissue in the in this part of the arm, but I don't you don't see it here. You know, I have a regular size wrist and all of that. Um so did that answer the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we were talking about the stages and what stage you were at. Yeah. And um, yeah. do you actually believe that in everybody that has lipedema, it is, it is just relative to the limbs, or do you think you can have truncal lip lipedema as well? Absolutely. So I, I personally, it's funny, I was looking at it today. I have it, um, I had a cesarean section, and yeah. I for sure have it um, between my belly button and my uh, C-section. Yeah. Um, and you can feel it very clearly in me. Uh, you can feel the like in my arms here and in my in that little roll on my belly. Um, you can feel the um, they're like little pearls. It feels like for me, it feels like a bag of pearls. Um, like if you went to a gem store and you just got a little bag, you put it in there. That's what it feels like. Um, you know, comes from, you know, some people can't feel it, uh, because they have regular fat on top that they can, you know, that covers it. Um, and also because maybe it's more grainy. And so, uh, but you know, it can take on, you know, even way bigger sizes than pearls too. So it's kind of, you know, again, dependent on the person. Mm -hmm. Um, and I imagine how long they've had it, how, um, for me, so I think when I look back, you know, when I look back of pictures of me as a teenager and in uh, even, you know, I went to college and I gained weight. And so even then, mm. it, that was just so silly and inconsequential. But it has always been driven by me eating carbs and less exercise. It's, it's absolutely like classic. So when I went to college, you know, in my house growing up, we didn't eat many carbs. But when I went to college, I was like, ooh, rice? Okay, they would say, you want one scope or two? I'll take two. You know, oh, a sandwich? Oh, yes, I'll have two slices of bread. You know, you know, and I would find whichever was the biggest, you know, what kind of bread do you want? And I'd look for which one was the biggest bread, you know, because, ooh, I'm going to get bread. Um, and that didn't work for me because then, you know, I – immediately I gained weight. And so, um, but I also, again, wasn't exercising when I went to college, like I used to, because yeah. I, I was, uh, you know, very, um, just as a kid, I was a dancer. And so I had that in my world that was, you know, I was in move, movement all the time. Do you think um, it can spread? Do you think that the, 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 the lipidema cells can spread from one part of the body to another? Or do you think it always presents where it always did? No, no, I think it can spread. I think yeah. it can spread. I think it can spread due to, uh, you know, like mine, like surgeries, you know, my, uh, my surgery uh, with um, my cesarean, for sure, absolutely. And, you know, Dr. Herbst finds people uh, have it on their head, their feet. Yeah. Wow. You know, on the bottom of their feet. Uh, so it can really be anywhere. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and, and yes, it does typically affect women, mm. but in men, it sometimes presents as a uh, Durkham's disease. Mm. And I even recently heard something about that. There are some discussion about do men who have like big tires, you know, they really have a lot of abdomen that they can't get rid of. Is that really lipidemic fat? You know, there's some, there's some discussion about that even. Now you've done a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, trial and error type sort of methods to keep to keep on top of this um one of the ladies wanted to know do you have any proven methods for reducing the bulk um particularly before any liposuction but also she, uh, you haven't had surgery yourself but do you know if after after liposuction there are different techniques that you need to use yeah so i have not had surgery i have been recommended to have surgery by yeah. both dr herbst and uh by dr emily eicher and uh, several surgeons that I've seen all, you know, will think, you know, your life would be so different. You wouldn't have any pain. You wouldn't have any, uh, your mobility would be changed. You're, you just, you, you don't even know what you're missing out on life. And I think that that's probably very accurate. Um, I've had some issues to, uh, that don't, don't allow me to go forward with that right now. And who knows what will happen. But in the meantime, the conservative methods that I have been using, and in particular on absolutely consistent basis, um, uh, during lockdown, the, the, they've been very consistent. And let me back up. So when Dr. Herb said, uh, you know, that I should be really considering this, um, having it removed surgically yeah. the liposuction she said but before you do that you have to work toward loosening up that tissue as much as possible so that you can have the best results yeah. because otherwise it's not gonna be what what we, we want to be and so okay well what do i have to do so her recommendations were to do gua sha treatments or a stem treatments or grastin therapy and those are all kind of like um kind of like dragging methods on the skin so so to speak mm -hmm. um uh and then um pool therapy pool water exercise because that acts as a lymphatic drainage massage yeah um she will say that that is the best thing to do and for yeah. me that is truly one of the things that absolutely loosens up my tissue. Mm. Um, do, you congestive... have, do you actually have regular? What? Do you actually have regular manual lymphatic drainage as well? I do not have manual lymphatic drainage right. uh, in in an office yeah. because, in my estimation, for me, it doesn't do anything for me. It's but like the raw therapy it, and so on gives the it, same effect. It makes a little, yeah, it makes a little difference yeah. and. Um, even the decongestive pumps for me personally yeah. make a little difference, but it's not anything long lasting pool, mm -hmm. much more long lasting for me and much soften, softens it up much more. Yeah. Um, the vibration plate for me, but whole vibration, whole body vibration is like astounding to me. And, um, I actually just got the, uh, Cadillac of uh, vibration plates today. So I'm very excited to see how that's different because the new one that I've gotten from um, Hypervibe has been what Dr. Herbst uses in her research. So wow. it has a higher frequency than the one that I've been using. So if I see results with the one I've been using, I can only imagine how much better it will be. Um, that, and I have all the plate, Beth. Is that what what some um, technology is that using? Is that electromagnetic magnetic stimulation? Do you know? You don't know. <laughs> we'll have to look it up afterwards and put a little nose on there. I think. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you do megahertz. I mean, it literally like you stand on it and it shakes. Yeah. Um, but like you know, like Dr. Herbst will say, every morning when you wake up, you should do do a dead cat pose in your bed before you get out of it. And so you're laying on your back, you put your hands up, you put your legs up and you shake them. And that's how you, everybody should start their day. Um, so anything to move the lymphatics, movement of course is key. And then um, dry, oh, I usually have it sitting right here. Dry brushing, yeah. it has been phenomenal. So for me, most of my life, I have been like a brick house, you know, like I'm like, you know, if you would have come to try and pinch my butt, 
you wouldn't be able to do it because it's there's not anything to grab it's too yeah. firm you know kind of thing and i always thought that was good yeah. and dr herbs was like yeah no you want to so soften that up yeah. so during this lockdown it has really transformed i mean it has really gotten loose now to the point that oh and also wearing compression yeah. so but to the point like i'm like oh geez now i have to wear the compression to control the jiggle, which yeah. I don't happen to particularly prefer. So, okay. um, but yeah. at least I know that it's getting um, improvement. Yeah. Um, we have yet to try um, um, cupping, yeah. but I think I'm gonna try that when we get out of this. And also I've done a little bit of fascia blasting, um, but I'm one of those who bruises very easily. So you can't, do it after you you know you have to wait in between bruises and so during this lockdown I've had a bunch I've had like I had an allergic reaction to bug bites I had um I don't know some other thing you know so I've been like you know I've had to be a little bit cautious in what I do um anything, have you done anything else kinesio taping or uh, myofascial release any of that myofascial release is fantastic um, and I have only done that once or twice. Um, and I definitely need to start doing that more. Yeah. Um, and, um, um, sometimes I do go on the roller. Yeah. Um, and then I even will use a rolling pin to roll on my legs. Wow. You know, while I'm sitting on the vibration plate, I'm rolling them with the rolling pin. Yeah. Um, not rocket so, science, just looking at the, the, the science behind what you're actually doing. And it's the same type of thing, but just using different method methodology, isn't it, to, to soften yeah. up the tissue, as you say. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we know some women who have such serious pain, um, they even use a um, paint roller. Wow. And then they, you know, they can't move, right? They can't, they, they don't have much range of motion. So they use the paint roller either on the little short handle or the long handle and they get the kind that's the soft squishy one yeah. and they just roll it up on the legs to do a mat, you know, like yeah. uh, simulate a manual lymphatic drainage and just yeah. that little bit helps things to get moving. Mm -hmm. um, I also use, um, especially before, like I could be in the pool now, mm -hmm. um, I use uh, Epsom salt baths, mm -hmm. which that is like phenomenal too. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna be looking into doing some um, kind of heat therapy, like infrared therapy. Yeah. See how that does anything. Radio um, frequency technology, any of those handheld devices? Have you tried that or are you looking to try that? Um, you know, those, the, there's different, um, there's different messages about those. So I'm always yeah. confused as to which, you know, mm, yeah, I don't know. I think it's just um, a learn, it's a learn, it's a, a real work in progress, isn't it? When you've got this condition and you just, you're probably so desperate, you'll try anything once, right? So right, well, you're, you're, you're always looking for the next, you know, what's the next thing or, you know, yeah. It's interesting yeah. what you say that you've never, you don't actually have manual lymphatic drainage though, because one of the common questions that comes in is, what are the real benefits? Do we absolutely have to have the MLD or the LDM as you call it over there? Um, or are there other things that can be done because of the, the cost of it, of course, it is expensive. Well, so so nice that, I did see that question and actually Dr. Herbst herself will say that pool exercise any day over MLD. Really? Wow. Because okay. it, does, it actually does the whole thing, provides a better pressure. And, yeah. you know, you can, you know, you could just walk across a pool. You don't mm -hmm. even have to do anything. You can stand mm -hmm. in there and just, you know, um, I, I typically do not swim when I'm in the water. Mm -hmm. I typically just do movement. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, so, you know, that, typically is can be fairly cost effective and certainly in relation to mld mm. it is um yeah it, it's like night and day okay. right let's let's um, move on to the other questions because we because we get kicked out after an hour we've got 15 minutes left so let's try and zip yeah. through as much as we can all right so um okay, i want to go back one second one second karen i want to yeah. talk about that um yeah. what should you do before and after so i yeah. think it is my understanding that 
before you need to make your tissue as soft as possible. So if that, if, if you were going to go for surgery, so that means that you are doing whatever you can do to have and you can do to your body to, to make sure your lymphatics are flowing and then whatever form you can take to do, uh, you know, manual lymphatic drainage, the dry brushing, absolutely yep. hands down simplest thing in the world to do. Um, and I personally have phenomenal results. Like I said, with the vibration plate, other yep. people use the rebounder, yep. but it is my understanding that this is not stuff you can change up after you have to continue to do this. And yep. truly, if you are going to go for surgery, you have to make sure that you're getting that manual lymphatic drainage in, in the first few days, if you really want to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success. Because mm -hmm. one of the things that actually causes the lipedema fat to, and regular fat even, but lipedema fat in particular in this case, to grow rampant is a state of inflammation. So mm -hmm. if you've now had surgery, and you're like, oh, okay, I'll wait for it to go down, you know, the inflammation to go get down. Guess what? That's rampant in your body and it's looking for other places to get to, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to the breast, it's going to the to the waist because you had your lower legs done. Because mm -hmm. it's it's finding a place where it's not uh it's not been harmed yet. And it it's like, okay, go, you know. So, um, yeah, so I think, and then, and then compression, you know, generally that is considered something that you have to do depending on your surgeon, you know, for a period of time. But it seems to me from what I've seen over the years now that most people that have the best success, they just continue to wear it. They, do, yeah. they don't stop wearing it. They continue to wear it, yeah. and um, you know you're you're really not seeing the full effects until 12 months to a year, 12 months to 18 months later, a year to a year and a half mm -hmm. to really. Um, but then, if you're, you know, if you're past the stage one, likely you have to have more than one surgery. So when I think this was one of the questions, when do you, you know, have your next surgery, yeah. and that is you know, depending on your surgeon, that yeah. is depending on your health situation, that is depending, but, but most surgeons will say, if everything is okay, and everything is progressing as it should, and, you know, we just want to knock this out because your health can handle it and whatever, they will, they will look at, you know, four to six weeks to do the next surgery. So if you're on that kind of aggressive schedule, then you have to keep pushing out your year and a half, right? Because your body is in, you know, in, in constant attack of inflammation and, and it's, it's to no fault of your own. It's from the surgery. So, I hear, um, you know, quite a lot of the ladies in my group say, is it possible to out, they're trying to outrun it. So what they're trying to do is they think, or they've got this kind of notion in their head that you have to yeah. have so many surgeries to be able to, to actually get on top of it before it starts spreading uh, and regrowing. Is that is that true? Do you think that that is true? So you're never going to get on top of it completely unless you do it within a certain limited time span with the surgeries. So I have asked that question a, a number of times about like, you know, could you really wait a year in between? Mm. You know, or do you really have to do them close. Yeah. And the answer that I always get is, no, you can wait a year in between. Yeah. Okay. Um, but is it better to do it, you know, back to back to back? Maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there's been varying answers on that one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's also varying answers about if you have venous insufficiency as well. Yeah. Do you have to handle that? In the U.S., it depends on the surgeon. I believe in the U.K., you have to have that done before you can have your your surgical procedure. Mm -hmm. But in the U.S., depending on the surgeon, you mm -hmm. can uh, attack it first or not. I was reading a testimony today of a woman who had her um, her one leg done and, with venous insufficiency. It didn't go as great as she had planned. 
She finally had the lipedema surgery a couple years after it. And uh, on the other, on the leg that she didn't have it because she should have had it done in both. And it completely resolved in the one that she hadn't affected in me, uh, from venous surgery. Yeah. So yeah. there's some discussion um, about whether or not really the lipedema is just strangling the venous system. And then once it's freed up, then that starts to work correctly as well. Do you think that uh, we really are running, running out of time? Do you, re do you think that because obviously we link it with hormones in a lot of cases, do you think that these ladies, there's quite a few of them that are kind of perimenopausal age. Um, yeah. Do you think that they should wait until after perimenopause before they go for their liposuction surgery? I think there is some discussion that that is, you know, that that is helpful. Um, yeah. But then, you know, there's there there are other thoughts that say, um, well, you um, you know, you wait. Uh, if you did it now, then maybe your perimenopausal symptoms wouldn't be as bad. Mm -hmm. I think the whole perimenopause thing, again, to me, is if you are walking the straight and narrow, if you are eating however it works for you to be the least inflamed and you are moving your body to make sure that inflammation is at a, is, you know, I mean, we're always going to have inflammation because our cells are inflamed, but to, to keep it at its minimum, you, uh, I, I think that you don't even, you know, Suzanne Summers, remember Suzanne Summers. So she had a book years ago when she was going through menopause about, um, you know, how to do that. And it was because she was eating an anti-inflammatory diet. Well, I mean, that that is, diet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was the whole entire premise. And so really this, you know, we really have to look at food as medicine in this, in this particular condition. And if you have liposuction, you, you can't change that because you still have it in your body. It is still part of your makeup. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not going to change. You're not going to go and have surgery, remove every little bit of it. And then all of a sudden, you know, live off of McDonald's every day. It, it's not going to work out that way. And if on you're, subject, if that's what you're thinking, then the that's nutrition and an anti-inflammatory diet. Do you think that there are certain supplements that will ben that benefit lipedema ladies? The certain what? Supplements. Oh yeah. You know what there is. If you go to Dr. Karen Herbst's website, which I don't know what it is right now, because I, she's in the process of change of, of moving and creating a new yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. She Look has some recommended ones. I've seen her website. She does have some yeah. recommended supplements to take. Yeah. I just wondered if there was like yeah. a generic, like for example, bromelain is known to reduce inflammation. Well, yeah. which um, digestive enzymes is definitely yes. a thing that's very yeah. helpful. Um, yeah. Diosamin, she just talked about. Um, she yeah. also talks about mucinex to help yeah. loosen up the uh, mucus system, which is all related to lymphatics. Yeah. Um, those are some of the key, like, um, let's see, I'm drinking dandelion root and burdock tea. I mean, like, you know, there's, it's a very, you know, there's a lot of choices of things that you could implement there. Yeah, for sure. You've tried, you've tried a lot. You've tried a lot, haven't you? You've been there, done a lot, haven't you? So, okay. Um, yeah, so that's all good. Um, one of the things um, that crops up again and again and again is the lack of surgeons that actually choose to specialize in their six minutes. Yeah. Uh, why do you yeah. think that is? Is there, a, is there a particular reason for it over there? Well, first of all, it is, it is an unknown disease. It is absolutely yeah. an unknown disease. Yeah. First of all, second of all, people don't want to know about it. Yeah. People, it's much easier for a doctor to say, oh, you're fat, forget about it. Mm. Oh, just eat right and, you know, whatever. Mm. Oh, you know, uh, bring, I mean, I have had like four of my very own doctors who I've no, like known for years, years and years and years and years. Mm. Um, I had polycystic ovarian syndrome when I was younger. And so I didn't know that I was going to be able to get pregnant. So I was seeing a fertility specialist as my regular gynecologist. Mm. I've known her for years. 
it turned out I didn't have any issues. And so I didn't have to go that route, but I was being treated by a expert. Mm -hmm. And when I came upon this, she was like, yeah, no, I don't believe it. And I was like, wait a minute. What? Like, what are you talking about? Like here, read this. And this mm -hmm. is a brilliant, I'm talking brilliant woman, but it yeah. is easier for her to tell her patients, eat a vegetarian diet, eat a, you know, uh, it's worked for me. You know, she's as skinny as a bean pole. Um, you know, people would think that she is anorexic if you looked at her really. Um, but she's, you know, that's how she's lived her life. She's lived a vegetarian life and it's worked for her. Mm. Um, but, uh, so I, you know, I don't know. It's, mm. uh, it's like, how, I think you a just, lot of it. I think a lot of it is because of the fact that it is unknown, as you say, and also because of the fact that it's not dealt with in one surgery. And I think that surgeons over here, in particular, tend to shy away from things that are going to cause them rework. And well, because it, okay. it grow back. Yeah. So, so, on. so yeah. the, I think the other thing here is that, I mean, in my opinion, I think that that fat is the last bias in the world. I think yeah. it is the one that still gets the most uh, play, but people don't ever want to admit it. And yeah. I think that nobody wants to be associated with it, right? So there's that. Because yeah. really here in the US, insurance doesn't pay for it, right? Yeah. So yeah. you could make hand, money hand over fist if yeah. you were a lipedema surgeon. Because let me just tell you, they say 11% of women have it is way more than that. It's yeah. simply because that's only the number of women that have been diagnosed. Yeah. You know, there's not in the United States, 67% of women are over the size 16 as of last September fashion mm -hmm. week. So mm -hmm. that's a lot of women. That's way more than the pre, pre raphaelite paintings. Do you think that some of those ladies have lipedema? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, going back to your, so, um, going back to how you've embraced it and learned that actually you can be sexy. Well, hey, isn't there just a great example? They never used to paint yes. skinny, skinny rigs, right? It was always, um, you know, the yes. curvaceous. Um, right. Yeah. There, we, have, we have a lipedema lady who is, um, what is her thing? I want to think she's called FC Lipidem. She's in France and she's an artist. And she has this week, she has been redrawing like Venus and um, Ruben, you know, Ruben's paintings and um, uh, like five of the, the you know, top paintings uh, ever done in, but putting them with a shape, with a, giving them a bit more of a lipedema shape and it's it's astounding it's absolutely phenomenal the work that she's doing like because you know now you know we thought that those other women were you know a little round and these are just you know dead spot on it's it's great we got two minutes left my darling let's just do another thing focusing on surgery um there is a safe limit over here on fat removal yeah Yes. Um, yes. Is, do you know if that's the same over there? Do you know if, they, if, if, it, if it varies from region to region and country to country? Well, so, okay. So remember in our world, they're, they're just starting the standards of care. So, yes. right. And I believe that the Ann Darcy case has had implications here as well. So there's that. Um, yes. I think that it really is truly based on surgeon and where they operate out of. So if somebody actually operates in their surgery center that they own, that they handle, they have different rules that they have to follow than if they operated in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, and, you know, they'll say, um, uh, I think, I think it's the same. I think it's five liters is the maximum or something like that. But yet, that's not what happens, <laughs> you know, so, you know, uh, you know, I think it's all relative to the surgeon and the patient and what they agree to and, um, you know, how aggressive the surgeon wants to be, how comfortable the patient is. It's, We're going to get uh, you out yeah. in a second, so I'm going to say my goodbyes to you, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that I copy this and put it on my link as well, because I think it's really important for people to know that there are inspirational women out there like yourself that are living with it every single day, but embracing it 
realizing you can still be sexy. You are a very sexy woman, as you put, you know, and you, you know this. Perhaps that's even what's putting you off surgery, right? Why change? If it ain't broken, why fix it? Yeah? Who knows? You know, you know? There, there is that, but it's also like, um, you know, I still think for me, I, I feel most comfortable if I don't have to go under, but we'll see. We never know. So thank you for having me. And I will send this to you as well. And I hope you have a beautiful day. Lovely to chat. Take care, darling. Bye. Have a beautiful day. Bye. 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 You'll have to turn it off, won't you? Bye. 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 Bye.